Go ahead and give thanks to the Lord. Thank the Lord for He has been good to us. He has been merciful to His children. Almighty God, we thank you for another wonderful opportunity you have granted us this morning, Lord, to praise you for your goodness and mercy upon our lives, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Be magnified in our lives, Lord. Be magnified in this chapel this day. In the name of Jesus, have your way in this place, Lord, and be exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for this week. For it is your perfect will that your servants from different parts of the world should meet together at a conference in Chigali. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will stand with the Gafcon that every decision that shall be arrived at in such a conference, Lord, shall give glory back to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Father, for your servants who are traveling there, that you will make them to reach safely, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And when time comes back, time, time comes when they are returning back, Lord, you will bring them back safely, Lord, to the glory of your name. We praise you, Father, in the name of Jesus, and we know, Father, that through this conference, Lord, you servants, Lord, will be able to stand firm in your ewe, and that they will live to give glory back to you, Lord, irrespective of the forces of the darkness of this world that come against your church. Thank you, Father, King of glory, for the fire you have brought us, Lord, as the body of Christ. And it's our prayer that you will keep the church on course. That you will cause the church, Lord, to be the light and the salt of the world. And that the church shall live to give glory back to you. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, remember our families. There are many things that are going on in our families, threatening the very values that has sustained our families for years and for centuries. Lord, we pray that you watch over families. We pray for peace in our families. We pray for trust. We pray for true love. In the name of Jesus, every channel that the enemy uses, Lord, to disorganize our families, Lord, be blocked completely in the name of Jesus. May you arise and paralyze every agenda of Satan against our family, every powers behind divorce, Lord. We overcome them by the blood of Jesus and we render them powerless and we declare by the power of the cross and in the name of Jesus that the family shall be united, Lord, that your glory shall shine, Lord, in our families, in the name of Jesus, that each members of our Family shall be proud to belong to such a family in the name of Jesus. Let your hand of favor be upon our families. And let your goodness and mercy pursue each and every member of the family. So that your perfect will may surely come to pass in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, 
Lord, we bring before you Makere University. We thank you for the management. We thank you for the staffs and the student fraternity as a whole. Lord, we pray that because this is the season and the times that you have chosen for each and every one of them, Lord, to be in this institution at a time such as this, we pray, Father, that you will cause them to remain focused, Lord, and that, Lord, the main purpose why the hair shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray specifically for the students, especially those ones, Lord, who could be struggling in one way or the other. May you open your hands and supply their needs. May you grant good health to your children. Lord, we pray that you will connect these students to people who matter in life. People who will appreciate who they are and those who will add value to them. The same way we pray that your wall of fire will disconnect them from wrong companies. In the name of Jesus, people who come into their life, Lord, to divert their attention from the main purpose why they're here. May you cut such people off from their life so that they may focus on the main business in this place to the glory of your name. Our preacher this day, we surrender him under your care. May you prepare him, empower him, equip him, master king of glory, and use him as a vessel to bring your message with clarity and power. The words that will minister to us, transform our lives, and cause us, Lord, to be humble servants. In the name of Jesus, finally we surrender our country, Uganda, special our president, Museveni, and those who help him, Lord, to govern this country. Lord, we pray that you will grant them the wisdom and understanding that come from the throne of grace and that they may be able to manage this country in a way that shall give glory back to you. We praise your name as we continue with our service. May you be at the center and guide us in the power of the Holy Spirit till the end so that your perfect will for this day may surely come to pass. In Jesus' name we pray. We shall join in the words of the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. It's time for the ministry of the word. Thank you. Our reading is taken from Numbers. It's Numbers chapter 12. Numbers chapter 12 from verse 1 to 9. Numbers chapter 12 from 1 to 9. And it says, Mariam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Cushite woman whom he had married. For he had married a Cushite woman. And they said, Has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord had it. Now, the man Moses was very meek, more than all men that were on the face of the earth. And suddenly, the Lord said to Moses and to Aaron and to Mariam, Come out, you three, to the tent of meeting. And the three of them came out. And the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud and stood at the door of the tent and called Aaron and Mariam. And they both came forward. And he said, Hear my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak with him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses. He is entrusted with all my house. With him I speak mouth to mouth, clearly and not in dark speech. And he behold... 
and he beholds the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. That's the word of God. Thank you very much, our lesson reader. Let's appreciate him. Let's clap our hands for him. Good morning, everyone, and praise the Lord. You are all very welcome for this 9 o'clock service. Turn to your neighbor. Smile at your neighbor. I am not saying extend your hands, but I'm saying smile at your neighbor. There are people who are too, I don't know, they can't really look at their neighbors. They cannot smile. They come when they are annoyed. They go out when they are annoyed. But when you come to church, this is a place where you can relax a bit and smile. So let's smile. If you don't smile, laugh. If you don't laugh, smile. Praise the Lord. You are all very welcome and we are happy to see you. We'd like to welcome all of you, and we greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We'd like to welcome our brothers and sisters who are worshiping with us online. You are very, very welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Let's clap our hands as we welcome our brothers and sisters who are worshiping with us online. And we'd like to welcome visitors. Any visitor around today? Just put up your hand and we see you. You're welcome. You're welcome. So let's welcome our visitors. Let's clap our hands as we welcome our visitors. I would like to appreciate Team Hezekiah for leading us. Let's appreciate this wonderful team. Thank you very, very much. And may God bless you. And we are blessed to have the clergy who are here. The Reverend Irene, who is here, the Reverend Musa, and the Reverend Geoffrey Eluk, and other people will be introduced later. Without wasting time, may I now invite uh, a representative from Mother's Union to make an announcement. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is good. And all the time. Wow. I am called Rosalyn, and I'm a proud member of Mother's Union. Mother's Union in the house. Are they? Yes, at least they are there. So I am here on behalf of Mother's Union, St. Francis Chapel. And uh, I will ask the, um, the media team to project for us. And the reason why I am here is to let you know that Mother's Union or Mary's Day is at hand and it will be celebrated on 30th April. That is the end of this month. And on the same day, the Ministry of Mother's Union is will be welcoming new members or enrolling new members into the ministry. Now, if you are interested, we welcome you. There are numbers on this, on this flyer. You can contact any of them and you will be guided accordingly. Now, it is only in this ministry hmm, that the, the, the verse in Titus comes to fulfillment where young women learn from the older women. So do not shy away. Come and we learn together, for iron sharpens iron. Thank you so much. There will be a luncheon thereafter, and uh, the details will be communicated. Thank you so much. We will be glad to have you as part of this ministry. God bless you. Thank you very much. May I invite someone from... 
someone to make announcement about the senior marriage fellowship yes to come praise the living god it is well known that makerere university and saint francis chapel in particular is a chapel of the students but that does not deny the fact that it is a full church with all departments functioning probably more than even any other church other than the students church that i know um this is a background for me to announce that on the 22nd which is the next saturday there is going to be a senior marriage breakfast meeting. So, who are the senior marriages? The senior marriages are the, those who have been married for 15 years and above. <laughs> Amen? Yeah, so if you are married for 15 years and above you qualify to be in the senior marriages and therefore you are welcome to the senior marriages breakfast on, on saturday coming saturday so don't miss and we will be glad to see you and you will be blessed god bless you okay there is a question where we will be here at saint francis in the students community center down there Thank you very much. I am happy to know we also have senior married where I don't <laughs> qualify. Much as I would really want to be part of that, but I don't qualify. So may I, may I see those who have been married for 15 years? Not living together, but those who have been married. <laughs> There's difference between living together and being married. Praise the Lord. Uh, kindly put up your hand and we see you and those who will be there on Saturday. Yes, 15 years. Yes, yes. Let's clap for them and we pray for you that God will bless your time together. Allow me invite Mr. Alex Mugabe to come and greet us. next year around this time, please make the similar announcement for the senior marriage. <laughs> because then this troop will be part of that group. Praise the Lord. My name is Shalon Mugabe. I'd like to introduce the nation that the Lord has given me here at St. Francis. This is Nisi Laloyo Ebiagaba. This is Elion Aboe Merok Abimanya. This is Eloa Gumparot Ajuka. This is Stephen Musade. And that is Apofia Nyamukuru. I joined St. Francis Chapel in the year 2000 when I was a first year student here at Makere. Nine years later, on 1st of January in 2009, the Lord blessed me with a husband. And then, together, we started serving. I was serving previously as an usher, but together, we started serving here at St. Francis. When I came, I was the first to join St. Francis. I was a young girl, small, short, unexposed, and untinctured by experience. But over the years, at St. Francis, the Lord has blessed me and grown me. 
Alex. Praise the Lord. And so, in 2009, Sharon and I said our vows here. Before that, I was a member at Calvary Chapel, Kampala. I was born again in 1996, and I've been working with the Lord since. We have since served among you. We have since walked with you. We have since fellowshiped with you. This has been our home. You have nurtured us. You have ministered to us. And we have had opportunities to minister among you in various capacities. Friends, the Lord has now assigned us a new, um, a new experience, a new ministry. And so we are here to share about that. We are here to be accountable to you. And we are here to ask for your prayers and for your blessing. So last year, at the beginning of September, Shalona and I, and our family, and a few other brethren, we planted a church in Ichira. St. Philip of Caesarea Bible Church. The mission is to preach Christ crucified, the power and wisdom of God, and to salvation, the hope of glory. Our charge is to preach the word. And so, friends, here we are, to seek your blessing and to walk in the light. Because we want to walk out through the front door so that we can remain in fellowship and in partnership in the vineyard of the Lord. So we stand here to bid you farewell. To thank you for walking with us. To thank you for ministering to us. To thank you for nurturing us. And to say, you're welcome to visit with us at St. Philip Church in Chira. May God abundantly bless you. Thank you so much. They will be having Thanksgiving in the next service, 11 o'clock service, so you can stay around and join the family. Let's appreciate them. Thank you so much, our dear brother Alex. And may God bless you and bless your ministry. Our dear chaplain, the Reverend... Okay, okay. Since God has done something, let's appreciate God and give hand clap to the Lord. For now, he is the right Reverend Onesimus Asimwe. And now God has given us a chaplain, the new chaplain, the Reverend Dr. Lydia Chitaimba, who is not with us today. She is on her way going to Chigali for GAFCON, and we pray for her and the entire team, the Archbishop and all the bishops, the lady who will be gathered there for GAFCON. And we pray that God will bless their time together. So I bring you greetings from our dear chaplain. Kindly receive greetings from our dear chaplain, the Reverend Dr. Lydia. Today we are blessed to have our brother who will be speaking to us, who is already here, and that's none other than Justice Mike Chipita, who is here with his dear wife. That hand clap is not enough. Let's put our hands together. Welcome our brother Justice Mike and his dear wife. You are very welcome, and I am not worthy to introduce the, your dear wife, and you will be the one to introduce her to us. You are very, very welcome once again, and we look forward to your ministry today. And he will be speaking to us on this very important topic, service with humility. It's a topic for us. It's a topic for us to evaluate ourselves. So he will tell us more about that. 
So, before he comes, may I now invite the drama team to come and pave a way. Once again, you're all very welcome. Let's welcome Justice once again. You are very, very welcome. Thank you for being here. God bless you. Oh my Jesus, the day I have waited for has come. I couldn't wait, my God. <laughs> uh, frankly, in first way, do you know how we moved? It is. Looking for those votes. <laughs> Hey, hey, Music hey. System, are you guys ready? Today is party. Party after party. I those chairs very well. Hey, the president is going to sit here. Why is the cake? That one is already made earlier. My chair very close to the guild. Of president course, me, I'm the, I'll sit next to you. It has been that way, we, that way we struggled, my God. <laughs> but frankly, mm -hmm. do you know if it was not this thing you're looking Hey, this is the decade. Party! Party after party. But I've worked for this really. Bow, please. Way, 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 way. Ladies and gentlemen. Yes. yes. Ladies and gentlemen. Yes. 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 Today is a victory party. It's a victory. 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 Today we are celebrating yes. the election of our guild president. Yes. This man, this man, oh my God, this man is going to transform Makerere. Yes. This man is going to bring change. Yes. This is the man we've been waiting for. Yes. Way, 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 way. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us prepare the place. Thank you all for coming. Uh -huh. Thank you, those ones who have traveled. Uh, those are from UCU. Those ones. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Chambogo people, thank you for coming, Chambogo. Uh -huh. uh, so, uh, we are now. In, we are now. The guy is almost here. So, just be expectant. Organize yourself. Uh, the food people. Uh, thank you. Service providers. <laughs> yeah, people. Thank you all. Uh, our good president is just in the, in the way coming. You know the convoy. Ah. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for. So, you know, today is not a speech day. We don't have a lot to speak. It is the Mr. Gil President, sir. Yes. Thank you for coming. We are glad to have you. So, please, can you welcome the people? They are, they are looking amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hey, <laughs> Ah, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Thank you very much for voting. Thank you very oh much. Man. We oh fought. Oh we man. did our best. We walked in the rain, walked in the dust. Thank you so much. Yes. To God be the glory. I want to just say, with me, Ogwa, in power, really, just know hey. everything is going to be okay. Because with O, O comes with E, only opportunity. O comes with E. Oh, only goodness. Mm. Oh, comes with what? Only oh, niceness. God. Everything. <laughs> ah, this is so good. So, so good. I'm overwhelmed with the joy and everything. So, allow, just, let me just take my seat and we continue the celebration. Uh, yes. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, Mr. President, sir. Mr. President. Mr. President. You know when we gave you this mandate, we even elevated you. You see, the, the vice chancellor is going to come and sit just here. So we have now elevated you to a higher level. You are now going to sit on the big table. Uh, he, the chancellor is going to be there, the vice chancellor. We have invited these people. Uh, hey. In fact, uh, before actually I take the, 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 the seat, as you're saying, please, I want to say thank you. Thank you once again. And most of all, I want to thank someone, someone who has stood with me. She has prayed with me. She has been there for me. Hello. She has really, really, I, I don't know where I would be without her. Because ah, we have done sleepless nights, sleep looking for votes. Yes. Mary, Mary, you come. Mary, come. come, come. Hey. 
Mary, come, come, come. Let us sit Excuse together. Excuse me, here. Emma. What hell am I seeing? Am I in dreams? What? Who is she? Oh, Barbara, Lord. what is wrong? Mary. Uh, Emma, so you can't recognize my efforts? Uh -huh. Emma, what hell am I seeing here? No, Barbara. It what is, is a president here. Yeah. Emma, if your success is want. my success. <sighs> Emma, I've really suffered with this. This month I've given you my money to win, to give, to buy sweets. Emma, you can't do this to me. <sighs> you said I have to but, sit in this chair with you. Who is she? But, Excuse but me, Barbara, Emma. why are you acting like this? Emma, you can't do this to me. Do not cause any damage in my heart. <sighs> Emma, do not. Who is no. she? Just come and we sit you in know, our chair. You know, Baba, please. Emma, I don't know what I is wrong. What I, has happened? I was to your you? girlfriend. What are you talking Emma. about? I have my to sit in this chair with my you. My girlfriend? Ah, no, Barbara. Really, me. I, I never said anything. What are you saying? <laughs> Emma, what are you saying? You showed any agree. signs and symptoms of love. Me, I am your girlfriend. You, you can't do this to me. No, can you respect but, the president? But, but we are just friends. Out. We are just friends, Emma, Barbara. No. Wait, hear it for me. This one. To go. You Emma, have to be to We are regret. hungry, we are very you hungry, are you are disturbing. The decision you're and taking, you know it. <laughs> it. <laughs> my, it my girlfriend. <sighs> my gosh. We <clears throat> even know. So, but you see, as sometimes all of you, you always also want to put yourself there. Let's be humble. Let's emulate Christ. Hey. Uh, let's uh, uh, give another round of applause to the drama team. If it wasn't for the formalities, the sermon is done. We would be going. But uh, praise the Lord. Good morning. Welcome to church. Uh, glad to be here this morning once again. We were together last year. Those of you who are here. Any freshers? Ah, okay. Welcome. Yes, uh, together I, w I was asked to introduce my wife, but even if I have not been asked, I would have introduced her anyway. Uh, Dr. Monica Balia Chibita, my wife. We have been together 32 years. And uh, the Lord has blessed us with uh, five children, uh, two, two girls and uh, three boys. But now we have a third girl because our firstborn got married in December and brought us another girl called Cleo. So we thank God. But uh, Monica is uh, dean of the School of Journalism mass media and communications at uh, Uganda Christian University. I don't know if it is a sister university. <laughs> While we are pondering on that, uh, just to complete the, the introductions, she's actually a proud old girl of Makerere University. And uh, she was in Mary Stewart Hall. I'm a gallant rat, Mitchell Hall. Mitchell, eh? if you have heard about the 10 years of bull roasting, I was part of that bull roasting. 10 consecutive years. And it was always a pleasure to bull roast and deny Lumumba the opportunity to do that. And the other pleasure of uh, marrying somebody from Mary Stewart, again, we gave Lumumba. <laughs> so uh, we had that healthy competition with Lumumba, 
but during my time, we always uh, emerged one above Lumumba. I don't know what the situation is right now. The same? Okay, great, great, great. I would like to congratulate uh, Bishop Onesmas Asimwe upon uh, being uh, exalted to the high office of bishop. Let's congratulate him with a hand clap. And we also congratulate the new chaplain, Reverend Lydia, Reverend Dr. Lydia Chitaimbwa. Let's appreciate her as well. Of course, we congratulate you, St. Francis Chapel, because that means you are good shepherds, you are good sheep, to be able to produce a bishop. So let's clap for ourselves as well. Um, Mike Chibita, my name's. I am uh, president of the Bible Society of Uganda. And uh, what does Bible Society do? Bible Society uh, provides Bibles to people, translates in them in different languages, and uh, it is amazing how many languages still are left for the Bible to be translated. Bible Society also is an umbrella body bringing together all Bible-believing churches. So, despite our differences, we have a lot in common, Catholic, Anglican, Baptist, Orthodox, Seventh-day, Pentecostal, Presbyterian, Methodist, who have I left out? Don't feel left out under Bible Society. We are all under one umbrella, and the work is to promote the work of the Bible, translate, and provide it at affordable prices to everybody who wants a copy. I am also a committee member of Scripture Union of Uganda, Scripture Union. You have graduated from that when you are at university. We mostly work with primary schools and uh, secondary schools. I am also a member of the Board of Trustees of Focus Uganda Fellowship of Christian Unions, and that is where many of you belong after you leave. We bring together people who have been through universities and other tertiary institutions. Uh, I am a justice of the Supreme Court. That's what I do. And uh, I thank God for the opportunity to serve in that capacity. I thank you all for coming here this morning. Our topic today is service with humility. And I recognize that uh, for you to come here and not be elsewhere is an act of humility to acknowledge God and come and be in his presence. But even more remarkable is that you can come to listen to somebody you don't know and uh, you want to listen to what I have to say. And to be able to listen to the clergy here, they tell you, stand up, sit down, kneel down, and you obey. That takes a lot of humility. So let's give ourselves a hand clap. In a way, we have the first steps towards humility by just being here. To acknowledge that your life, actually, you need to spend some time with the maker, the creator. That is an acknowledgement. And why I'm saying that is uh, in my village, I have a small village in... Uh, Eastern Uganda, a district called Butaleja, a village called Buesa. So uh, we attend an Anglican church there called St. James. So one Christmas, you know, if you are familiar with the village, there are rumors and they go around and they don't have social media. That is our form of social media, house to house rumors. So the rumor came around that uh, the lay reader who was going to preach at Christmas had uh, stolen the neighbor's turkey. Th this was the news reaching me. <laughs> and then I said, I don't think I'll go to church because I cannot listen to a thief of a turkey. What can he tell me? And I struggled that night. But uh, in the night, uh, God convicted me and said, actually, if there is anybody worth listening to. It is somebody 
can steal and in the morning come to preach the word of God. That must be remarkable. Either he will be the greatest hypocrite or something would have happened to him and he repented. So I went. I went and uh, listened to him and I'm glad I went. Of course, uh, I was not an investigator so I never verified whether the story was true or not. But uh, I was blessed by the message. So, we come with a lot of humility when we come to church. Because the people we are coming to listen to, the people you see in the choir, maybe you have some information about them, rumors about them, and you say, those people are not worth for me to listen to, but you still come. That is humility. So for us to be able to listen to another human being uh, ministering to us, telling us about God, is a sign of humility. So I congratulate you and uh, would like to encourage you that we are already humble people, all of us. Our theme here at uh, St. Francis Chapel for this year, 2023, is United for Service and Growth. And the theme for April is Created and Shaped for Service. For today, we are talking about service with humility, and therefore our common thread is service. We are born to serve. We are created to serve. To serve God and to serve our fellow human beings. And by serving our fellow human beings, we are serving God. And we serve in different capacities as our passage says, some are pastors, apostles, prophets, preachers, lay readers, deacons, and so on. We all serve in different capacities in the church. To bring it close to home, some are lecturers, some are doctors, some are lawyers, are waiters, waitresses, some are students, those student is not a, a permanent port of call, but for the time being. And so the question in our different capacities, areas of service, we have to ask ourselves, whom are we serving? Whom do you serve? And how do you serve in that portfolio that you are holding? Is it a service or is it a duty? You have to wake up in the morning and... Uh, I have to go and do this again. You look at it as a duty, as a burden, as an obligation. The perspective, the mindset helps when you look at it as a service. And that is what we are talking about today. You are doing whatever you are doing as a service to humanity, as a service to God. And that makes a lot of difference how you do it. Who is your customer? Is it a student? Is it your client? Is it a patient? Is that customer king or queen when they leave your presence? Do they feel like they are the king, the queen? Customer is king after all, the slogan goes. <clears throat> Humility exemplified is given to us in Philippians 2, verses 5 to 11, which I will read for us. Philippians 2 verses 5 to 11, having this mind which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form. He humbled himself to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our role model for humility is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's our example. He blazed this trail many, many years ago. 
And as I was told by somebody who taught me how to be a servant lawyer, a good lawyer, he said, your number one client is the Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever walks through coming to see you, to meet you, they are an exemplification, a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. So as you attend to them, know you are attending to the Lord Jesus himself. He is your number, client, or number one client. And whoever is in your presence, once you have this mindset of being a servant of the Most High God, you know whoever crosses your path, is a representative of our number one client. C.S. Lewis, who you should be familiar with, said, humility is not thinking less of yourself. Humility is thinking of yourself less. I repeat, it's not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. You know, sometimes we get obsessed about ourselves, everything is about you. You want to think about yourself. Uh, the lady who was warming up to sit near the girl president, she was so obsessed with herself, her contribution to the ca campaign, her role, she forgot that uh, she was not the girl president. She was not even the girlfriend. But because she had thought so much about herself all the time, and we need to know <clears throat> that uh, humility is not an event. It's not like a light you switch it on and off. It is a lifestyle. It's a mindset that you need to cultivate over time. And as I said, you already have the first step to it. We can cultivate and have a lifestyle, a mindset of humility. Let's look at some of the hindrances. Why? Are people not humble? In other words, why are people proud and arrogant, which would be the opposites of humility? <clears throat> of course, one of the things is uh, we look at other people and you say, how will they see me? Aren't I better than them? They are the ones who need me. That is pride. That is pride also represented by something called ego. E-G-O. No people with big egos. They are selfish. They are always thinking about themselves, being at the top, being at the front, and that kind of thing. <clears throat> and that is what it can lead to. Why are not many people humble? Why are people proud? It's because of the fear of the cost of humility. Humility can cost you, it will cost you. <clears throat> what is the cost of humility? There's a book called The Cost of Discipleship. And in a way, the cost of discipleship is the cost of humility. Because as a disciple, you must be humble. And you know that the cost of humility, the cost of discipleship is everything. It will cost you everything. It is extremely high, and as our role model, the Lord Jesus Christ shows, it can cost you death, and the most cruel death on the cross because of his humility. Having been God, he did not count it as anything, but he agreed to subject himself to be a human being and face trial before human judges who were fallible, and who were corrupt and who did not have the wisdom that uh, he possessed. And they tried him. Many people call it a kangaroo trial, but he subjected himself to it. It cost him. But we know that in order to go high, you must first go low. We know that to step up, you must first step down. To teach, and I'm sure there are teachers here, professors, but they were once students. To teach, you must first learn. For us, judges, magistrates, to judge others, sometimes you must first plead before other judges to learn. And we've just celebrated Easter. We know that to live, to actually live, you must first die 
like our Lord Jesus Christ, died. So the cost of humility is quite high. But we know that God resists the proud but exalts the humble. One of the things that I think is a misconception is people think that uh, humility is a weakness, is a sign of weakness, and that's one of the things, the hindrances to humility. People will think you are weak or will treat you as a weakling. I saw a definition that said truly humble people think very well of themselves. <clears throat> they have a good sense of who they are, self-esteem. They are also aware of their mistakes. They are aware of the gaps in their knowledge and are aware of their imperfections. This is being able to know yourself. I hope you take off some time and know yourself. Because until you know yourself, you will have all these complexities and uh, inferiority or superiority complexes. But once you know yourself, you know the imperfections, the mistakes, and the gaps in your knowledge. Then you can work on them. You will have a healthy self-esteem. And then you will be on the way to humility. Because humility is not a weakness. To the contrary, it is a strength, something well thought out and something well cultivated. All things considered, after you have studied yourself and assessed yourself, you then decide to choose humility instead of pride. And sometimes pride and arrogance is because we don't have a proper perspective of life, of ourselves. You know, if you know God and you stand before the mighty God, the creator of heaven and earth, you stop thinking about yourself as uh, very significant, very important. Because the mighty God, you remember in Job, he gave him some God-sized questions. Were you there when I was creating the earth? <laughs> Do you know where the snow is manufactured? Do you know the length and the breadth and the size of the sea and the ocean? And then Job realized he knew nothing. And so if you want to put things in proper perspective, don't compare yourself to your neighbor. <laughs> compare yourself. In fact, you will not compare. Stand before the almighty God. And then you realize your proper size. And then humility will come very naturally to you. Perspective is about having the broad panorama of what's happening. One day I was privileged to visit one of the big cities in the world. And I was taken to the camera control room, you know, CCTV, where they capture the whole city. And you can see all the streets, and uh, they pulled up one of the streets, and somebody got out of the car. He had a pistol in his pocket, took it, handed it, and we were watching the whole thing on camera. We knew what street, what house number. I was able to have a perspective of the whole city and the human beings and how small they are from that perspective. But when you are on the street and you are the one thinking you are smuggling a pistol, your perspective is very, very limited. And I think that's why sometimes we are proud, because our perspective is very, very limited. But when you come face to face with God, you should have the broad perspective of who else is in the world, what else is in the world, and then not to say you should belittle yourself, as C.S. Lewis said, it's not thinking less of yourself, but having that proper perspective. What are the rewards of humility? We like rewards, and we should have rewards in this life. Proverbs 22, 4 says, the reward for humility and the fear of the Lord is riches, honor, and life. Proverbs 22.4 <clears throat> enumerates for us the rewards of humility. And we are told that these are the very things, riches, honor, and life. The things that God promised Abraham when he called him. He said, I'll give you riches, I'll give you honor, and I'll give you life. These are the things that were promised to Solomon, King Solomon, when God asked him, what will you choose? 
And when he did not choose riches and fame and all, God said, I will still add you riches and honor and life. And so was Simon Peter. When he asked, what will I get for following you? Again, God, in other words, said, riches, honor, and life. Rewards of humility. It is not in vain, <clears throat> not that we should be looking at the reward, but humility is its own reward. As I conclude, I would like to reiterate that we were created for service. In case you're struggling with why am I here, why am I in Makerere, why am I even studying, you are created for service. And you're studying to become a better servant in the area in which you're studying. I studied here, law school. Uh, any law students here? Ah, good, 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 good. So you have studied the law of contract and uh, consideration and that kind of thing. The reason you're studying that is so that you can become a better servant of the Lord and of God's people. When people are wondering who bought the land, was it this one, was it this one, there are many titles, you'll be in a better position to advise and maybe resolve the conundrum that surrounds land law in our country. So we are created for service, and whatever you're studying, you're studying to become a better servant in that area. I hope you have this perspective in mind. And as a church, now that we are in church this morning, we must serve as a body. And that is why the question of humility is very important, because we are serving with many other different people of all persuasions, of all walks of life, of all colors and sizes and so on, but we are supposed to fit together and serve together. We must therefore serve with humility and learn to do so together. We talked about the role model, <clears throat> our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are commemorating his uh, crucifixion and resurrection. <clears throat> and even at the cross, he exemplified humility as we said, he went through that trial. And uh, one of the questions that he asked at the trial was, one of them was asking him, tell us the truth. And he asked him, what is truth? <laughs> that is a very deep, loaded question. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So he was asking truth, what is truth? And uh, I think in modern language they would say, Olimo Ansa Mozanira. He was asking the truth, what is truth? And he did not know it. But Jesus humbled himself to be subjected to that cross examination. But at the cross, he was nailed with two robbers, one on each side. And Jesus, who knew no sin, uh, agreed aloud to be in the company of the robbers. And one of the robbers was really proud, arrogant, and uh, full of ego. He said, if you are the son of God, why don't you save yourself and save us also? Sense of entitlement, you know. But the other robber said, no, 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 you can't talk to him like that. Basically, do you know who he is? And the Lord recognized some humility in him, in the robber, even at the last moment. And he said, you'll be with me <clears throat> tonight in paradise. So after listening to that second robber and considering and analyzing, <clears throat> you wonder why he was on the cross for robbery. He seemed to have <clears throat> a, clean <clears throat> a clean, pure heart. And then you wonder, was it peer, peer pressure from his friend <clears throat> that he found himself crucified for robbery? And uh, having been uh, in the company of, uh, thank you very much, uh, my sister, thank you.
Having been in a company of investigators, I was a chief prosecutor one time. So I learned a lot about uh, investigation and arrests and that kind of thing. And with that, I, I kept thinking more about uh, this uh, second robber. Because he seemed to be different, you know, the, to recognize that uh, we are in the presence of the king, the lord of lords, and you cannot speak to him like that. So I remembered that uh, sometimes when police go to arrest people, <clears throat> Sometimes we've gone to arrest you, sir. <clears throat> God forbid. But because you're seated with those ladies and we want to find out more, we could arrest the whole bench there. It happens, unfortunately, because again, we don't have the proper perspective. We are not able to see beyond what's happening. So for us to get more information, we pick up everybody. Um, and sometimes, most times, we find out that the other three are innocent and we let them go sometimes after one day, but sometimes after a few years. <laughs> it's not a perfect system. It doesn't happen only here, but uh, all over the world because we don't know human hearts and uh, find out sometimes it takes time, unfortunately. That's why... They say being in the wrong place at the wrong time. So you should always avoid to be in the wrong place at the wrong time and that because you never know who they are looking for and you are in their vicinity and uh, you end up. This is not to scare you. Uh, you've come here to pray to the Lord and that should be one of your prayers that my Lord, let me not be picked up today for the, with the wrong people. Back to the robber on the cross. Is it possible that uh, he was just in the company of this guy and they had just gone for a stroll and his friend went robbing? And then when they came to round up, he also... And we see that the system was imperfect. They tried to make an innocent man and they convicted him, so why not another one? But what I want us to focus on as we conclude is the fact that uh, his true character came out. His humility to know that, no, I'm not the same as that gentleman in the middle. On the middle cross, he is an innocent person. It takes humility to be in uh, trouble, to be in sin, and to recognize that, no, that other person is innocent, is better than me. And so he rebuked his friend and said, for us, we are here and we deserve it, but he, you cannot talk to him like that. And the Lord said, tonight you'll be with me in paradise. You could be here today, this morning, <clears throat> and maybe you're caught up with the wrong people, with the wrong company, with the wrong offense, with the wrong sin, company and all. And maybe because of pride and arrogance and all, it is difficult to break through and say no. So I had a story about that uh, second robber, the one we are concentrating on. That, of course, he, the Lord says, you'll be with me to para in paradise tonight. And so he gets to paradise, and he's walking around. And uh, the gatekeeping angel says, hey, stop. And, and what is your Christian name? And uh, the guy actually uh, struggles. You know these people in crime, they have more than one name. So one of the experiences I had was uh, we called a guy as a judge. We called the man, let's say, what name should we say, Moses Kato. I say, can you take plea? And he says, um, not Moses Kato. I say, I beg your pardon? He says, I'm not Moses Kato. I say, but the file here, everything says you're Moses Kato. He says, I'm not the one. Okay, that's a little confusing because the, so I ask and they say, that is the man, he's just, so we say, okay, you may think you are not Moses Kato, but uh... <laughs> so the point is these people, sometimes they don't know their names 
or they have many names that they forget which name is theirs. So it's possible this gentleman, the robber, when they ask him his Christian name, he... So then they say, were you baptized? Where is your baptism certificate? I don't have. Confirmation? Who was your priest, parish priest? And then uh, the guy at the gate realizes this person must have somehow found his way, get crushed the party. So he calls his supervisor and says, please, you need to subject him to more questioning. I think we have somebody here who has come in and is not supposed to be here. So they subject him to more questioning. Tell us about salvation and the doctrine of sanctification and justification. And uh, the gentleman is like, so then how did you find yourself here? And he says, the guy on the middle cross told me to be here. He's the one who brought me. So you know the hymn, just as I am without one plea. He did not have a plea. The only plea he had the guy on the middle cross said, we meet in paradise, and that's how come I'm here. It's not bad to be baptized. It's not bad to be confirmed and study theology and no sanctification and edification and so on. At the end of the day, regardless of who you are, what you have studied, the only plea we have is that the man or the guy, according to him, of the middle cross, we know him and he has said, we can get in. And that is enough to get you in. And it takes humility to forget everything else. <laughs> so, this morning, I want to give you an opportunity. You may be here and you are counting on many things, maybe, and so on, holding you. Please, you want to have an encounter with a guy on the middle cross. This is your opportunity to walk to the front and we receive you in the kingdom, in paradise. You may have forgotten your name, you may have done so many things, and you have no credentials, you have no plea, but the guy on the middle cross ready to welcome you. As we conclude and go to the next team, please feel free to walk to the front and receive the guy on the middle cross. May the Lord bless you. Praise the Lord. We thank God so much for this message. Me, one of the things I, I'm going to go on reflect, reflecting on, the man on the cross. In the, in the man in the middle, <laughs> in the middle of the cross. So, I want by show of hands, if you know the man in the middle of the cross, Okay, praise the Lord. If you don't know the man, <laughs> the, the middle man on the cross, put up your hand also. Put up your hand. Ah, uh, ah, uh, there are some people I saw you did not put up your hand. So please be confident and put up your hand. What is stopping you from putting up your hand? Anyway, we want to thank God so much for you. This message that our preacher has preached to us. And friends, I want to remind you, we need to emulate Jesus Christ. He was humble. He left all the glory in heaven and accepted to come here on earth to die for you and me. And friends, at times, even in our salvation, we are proud and we are arrogant. So as we reflect on this message this morning, may we really humble ourselves. The scripture tells us that if we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, he will do what? 
he will exalt us. So as you live as God's representative on this planet Earth, please be humble. We are here at Makerere University. One of the things people say about Makerere University students is that they are proud. Eh? Yes. But also we have professors. We have doctors. Please, if you are here and you have been priding in your doctorate, in your being a professor, the word of God is calling you to humble yourself under the might hand of God. And one of the things really, one of the ways to humble yourself is to surrender to the Lord. The Lord is your maker and you have to give an account of what you did here on earth. There is this guy who wrote The Purpose Driven Life. What is his name? Hmm? Rick Warren, yes. Rick Warren said in, in his book, The Purpose Driven Life, that when you live, when your life is ended here on this earth, and you go to your maker, you will be asked two questions. The first question is, what did you do with your life on earth? What did, would you say? And then the second, the, what did you do with the life I gave you on earth? I don't know what you will say. And then another question. What, what did you do with my son whom I sent on earth? So have you, have you done anything with the son? Let us pray. Father Almighty, we give you thanks and praise. Thank you, King of Glory, for this message that we have heard. Serving in humility. Lord, I pray that it will keep ringing in our minds, that this message will produce fruit in our lives and fruits that abide. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's time to give to the Lord. And as we give, friends, remember God loves a cheerful giver. So give cheerfully, not grudgingly. God bless you. So 
more than that, more than that, please. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, I want to thank you for the blessing of offering in your house. Thank you, Lord, from you, all we have, you give. Lord, thank you for giving us the heart to always bring back to the giver. So it may bless the pockets that I've given. Lord, as a token of saying thank you for loving us, for giving us forgiveness of our sins without a cost, but you became the cost. May you bless these gifts, O Lord, that they will be used in your house to expand the ministry, to glorify your name more higher and higher. That, Lord, all the time we pray, we believe that you, our prayers reach before you. So bless all of us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. Turn to your neighbor and give the peace of God to your neighbor who is just there. Say, may the peace of God be with you. With a smile, you can greet and say, may the peace of God be with you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Beloved, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord sign his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord give you peace in your hearts. May the Lord give you peace in your families. May the Lord give you peace at the place of work. May the Lord give us peace in this chapel. May the blessing of God Almighty, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you who are gathered physically here. May that blessing be upon our online brothers and sisters. May that blessing be upon GAFCON. May that blessing be upon our country, Uganda. And may that blessing be upon this great university. And may that blessing rest upon all of us now and forever. Amen and amen. Let's clap our hands to the Lord and appreciate God for being with us. Thank you very much for coming in such a large number. Let's appreciate this wonderful team before us. Thank you very, very much for blessing us. The preacher, let's appreciate him once again for the wonderful sermon. May the Lord bless you, the AV team, the ushers, and all the ministers. Thank you so much for your ministry. We wish you a fruitful week ahead of you. Let's have the recess no hymn. As we go out, let's keep asking God for the grace to cultivate the lifestyle of humility as we look at him at the cross. Amen. <laughs>